Again, lesson number two talks about translations. So the first practice exercise will be from a verbal phrase, and we are going to predict what is its equivalent mathematical expression. The other a way around will be covered by the next video. So here we are told that a number one, a number h over nine. In translations, we need to determine uh, first if there are some variables that need to be represented, okay? If in the given problem, we already are given with the variable that we need to use, then we are going to use it. If there are no um, spe specific variable to be used, then it's up to you to decide which variables that you could use. Aside from that, we also need to know what is the operation being described by each uh, situation. So we're going to look at the important keywords that may tell us what operations to be used. In number one, we have here a number h. So we are now assured that we are going to use the variable h. A number h, it is told, said to be a number h because we don't know what is the value of that. Okay, uh, We don't know what is the value of h. So if h can take any values as you want later on. But again, our concern is just translation. So here, we are going to use a number h. So we are assured that there is a variable h. We are then also assured that there is a constant 9. Okay? We, also are, we are also assured that there is a constant 9. Now, we're going to look at how these two different um, terms are being separated with. So we, are, we have here the term over. When you look back your, at your module or just simply look uh, understanding what means what do we mean by over, this is actually commonly used when you talk about fractions. Let's say one half can be read as one over two, but well, it's better to be uh, said as one half, but other people will say one over two. Let's say 79 over 100. That's a fraction in a fraction form, which is 79 over, yeah, over, which means the division, the division process. So in short, over is the the um, keyword for division. In short, we will be using here division. Okay, H and then divide by 9. But of course, we could represent this better when we're going to use here the transform the division symbol into a division bar. So number one may be written as or its translation is H over Nine. Yeah, I've been reading it h over nine. Right? The way you uh, for for you to know whether your answers are correct or not, simply read your output. If it is uh, synonymous to what is given, the definitely that is correct. So I have I have I have read it as h over nine. Similar here, h over nine. But there is just a phrase a number. Uh, that's for number one. Number two, the product of three different numbers. In this given, we don't know what the three different numbers are. In comparison to number one, that we are set, given that the number is h. In number two, we don't know what the three different numbers are. So it's up to you what numbers, what what representations that you will use. But since uh, just simply consider the term different. In short, they are not the same. So if you will use here a, and then do not use another A because they must be different. And then B, and then you will use here C. Or you could use X, Y, Z, or K, M, N, F, G, H. It's up to you because, again, there's no specification on what the variables to be used are. Next is to determine the operation. The keyword here is product. Product is actually the result when you are going to multiply the terms. This means that the operation separating the three is multiplication. So the final, you may use here parentheses. But of course, in algebra, when we try to write product, we simply write them side by side. So this could be represented by A, B, C, written side by side, no more parentheses, because it automatically means multiplication. This is the product of three different numbers. If you have used x, y, and z, then definitely you could also say x, y, z. Just simply write them side by side because it automatically means multiplication. Number three, twice m less than four. 
So it it it's now more complicated than the first two numbers, twice m. But of course, we are assured that the variable to be used here is m because it's already given here as m. Now, we are all assured that it's it has m. We are already assured that we have here four. So we have m and then four, but it's not yet complete. We need to look at the other keywords. The first keyword here was twice. Twice is a special keyword for multiplication. It means uh, there, it is multiplied to two. It is also equivalent to the, to the term double, okay, which is multiplied by two. So twice m could be rewritten as two m. Well, some of you might say my write m2, but again, we need to write the terms properly. So we start with the numerical coefficient two and then m. Now, less the next term, the next keyword, again, we're done with twice. The next keyword is less than. Less than is a term for subtraction. Okay. In short, the operation separating twice m and four is subtraction. And you might say this one. So two m minus four. But of course, we're not sure yet if our answer is correct because it's not automatically say when you say less than its subtraction, it automatically look, looks like that. There is a special process when you use the term less than. By the way, less than doesn't mean this symbol. Huh? This is read as is less than. If it is read, if, if, if the given is twice m is less than four, then we are going to use this symbol. And definitely you will have that. But there's no is there it's just less than okay so we are not going to use the inequality symbol the special a process for less than is it actually um what do you call it 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 it, is, it actually interchanged the two different terms in the process of subtraction okay um when you say less than the minuend becomes the subtrahend and i uh, end up i mean the first the first term becomes your sub to the hand, and your second term becomes your menu hand. For those of you who still who forgot the terms menu and sub to the hand, in a subtraction process, let's say five minus two equals three, we know that three is a difference. The first number is the menu end. The second number is the subtrahend. In this case, when you say twice m less than four, twice m is not your menu end. Four is not your subtrahend. If it's less than, it's the other way around. In short, four becomes your minuend and twice m becomes your subtrahend. So this is actually incorrect. Again, four becomes your minuend. Let me write it here. And two m becomes your subtrahend. And then writing it properly in the process of the subtraction, the, the interpretation or the translation for the uh, item number three is, it, is equal to four minus two M. This is the translation of twice M less than four. Again, it just, it works for the term less than. If it's just simply less, there's no than, then we could just simply say 2m minus 4. But if it's less than, it's the other way around. Again, do not, do not just simply say this answer is the same to that one because there's no commutativity for subtraction. It should be 4 minus 2m, not 2m minus 4. That's the, inter the translation for number 3. Next, number 4, the square of r. So we are assured that there is r plus the cube of S, we are assured that there is S, okay? So we have two different variables now, R and S. So the next thing we need to determine are the, are, are, is the use of the other symbols. The use of, uh, the, that's not other symbols, uh, the use of other keywords, okay? So the keywords here are square and cube. Squaring and cubing are keywords for exponentiation, meaning they are exponents. When you say square, it's a special term for exponent two. And when you say cube, it is the, the special keyword for exponent three. So this is now the square of R, it is now the cube of S. To complete that, we still have one more keyword. The keyword here is plus. 
basically it's addition so our answer here or a translation here is r squared plus s cubed now if you're if some of you will say my are my answer sir is s cubed sorry that's a s not five s cubed plus r squared then I, we will still accept it because there is commutativity for addition but in number three as we go back to number three again if you're going to interchange the menu and the subtrahend, definitely it will be incorrect. So the correct answer for number four is this or this one, either of the two. Number five, the sum of a number x and three. Okay, so we have here x, we have here three, yields the difference between y and then seven. Okay, yields the difference between y and seven. So these are now the terms that we can notice. Uh, we uh, we have noticed it there the variable x, constant three, and the variable y, constant seven. Now to complete it, simply look at the other keywords. Number one, the keyword sum. When you say sum, addition. Sum of what? Sum of a number x. And three, so it's addition between x and three. So we place here plus. Okay. Next, difference between y and seven. So difference is the keyword for subtraction. But again, what is the minuend and what is the subtrahend? If it's just stated just like that, the difference between y and seven, automatically y becomes your minuend and seven becomes your subtrahend. So it just goes like this. Okay, so we have those uh, connect connectors, the addition and subtraction for the other side. To complete that, we have here the term yields. Yields is the keyword for equality. Okay, it's the same, uh, the same as the term results, the same as gives, equals, is equal to. So yields means equality. So we simply place here equality in short, the translation for number five, x plus three equals y minus seven. So the sum of x, I just need to read it. The sum of x and three, a number x and three, yields the difference between y and seven. So this is the correct translation for number five. Again, the process of translation is very important to, to be mastered before reaching operations and definitely problem solving. So how do you translate? Look at what are the terms or the uh, variables, the constants present in each of the situation, and then go to the keywords, and then check by looking at your answer, whether by reading it or by examining it, analyzing it, it will return to the given statement. This is the content of this video. Watch out for the other way around to be presented on the next video. Goodbye.